Good morning, students, staff, faculty, representatives, dignitaries, and all citizens with a vested interest in North Dakota State University and in higher education in the state of North Dakota. Greetings also to those viewing the live stream from the Experiment Station and Extension Centers, and to those of you who are unable to attend or watch live and will be viewing the recording of this address at a future date. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the annual State of the University Address. Before we go any further, I have two quick announcements. First, I would ask that you please silence or turn off your cell phones. Second, I would like to remind everyone that a recording of this address, including captions, will be available via the NDSU website after Monday of next week. My name is Stuart Herring, and I am the Faculty Senate President at NDSU for the 2017-2018 academic year. I am also a native North Dakotan who matriculated not only through the North Dakota K-12 system, but also through the North Dakota higher education system as an undergraduate student. I am proud to say that I am a graduate of the North Dakota University system, and I'm also proud of the strides that have been made in higher education in North Dakota since I graduated 20 years ago. In 1890, 127 years ago and one year after official statehood, the North Dakota Agricultural College was formed as the state's official land-grant research institution. Almost 70 years later, in 1960, a statewide referendum dictated that the North Dakota Agricultural College be renamed North Dakota State University of Agriculture and Applied Science, or NDSU for short, to reflect the increased breadth of studies offered at the institution. Today, NDSU is a state and national leader in many fields, including and beyond agriculture, and is committed to achieving not only the mission, vision, and core values of the university, but also those of the State Board of Higher Education and the North Dakota University System, all of which have a focus rooted in serving the citizens and needs of North Dakota and surrounding areas, while also having a national and global impact. It is the collaborative effort between NDSU, the North Dakota University System Colleges and Universities, the Systems Office, the State Board of Higher Education, and last but not least, state representatives and officials that will ultimately determine the direction and success of higher education in North Dakota. On May 24, 2010, Dr. Dean Bresciani became the 14th president of North Dakota State University and the representative for NDSU in the development and advancement of higher education, both locally and in the state of North Dakota. President Bresciani earned a doctorate in higher education finance with a minor in economics from the University of Arizona, and held a position as Vice President for Student Affairs at Texas A&M University prior to his arrival at NDSU. His experiences in instruction and administration include, but are not limited to, education finance, enrollment management, student success, integration of enterprise and academia, and strategic planning. President Bresciani's commitment to NDSU and by extension to higher education in North Dakota might best be captured in his contributed piece to the Bismarck Tribune from January 24, 2014, pertaining to the importance of higher education. Quote, in both percentage and sheer numbers, more Americans than ever before in the history of our country are accessing a higher education experience. It remains an inarguably commendable individual and societal economic investment, and is why employers, more than ever before, use higher education as an entry standard for most careers, whether they are in agriculture, trades, or professions. A surprisingly varied number of educational paths and disciplines can lead to success in those diverse fields." End quote. As a product of higher education in this state, and as a native and current citizen of North Dakota, I have a vested interest in the training and success of the graduates that NDSU produces, many of which are fellow North Dakotans and Minnesotans that will ultimately contribute to the innovation produced and economic growth within these states. NDSU is a student-focused land-grant research university that provides educational and training opportunities that are taken for granted in many states 
yet are at a premium in North Dakota. This is one of the reasons why students choose North Dakota State University to pursue their education. Today, we will hear how North Dakota State University contributes to and will continue to contribute to not only the success of our students, but also the success of our state. Please join me in welcoming President Dean Bresciani to present the State of the University Address. Good morning, and thank you all for joining us here today. And good morning again to our seven outstate research extension centers, the Oaks Irrigation Research Site, the Agronomy Seed Farm in Castleton, and the Extension Service offices in every county of North Dakota who are joining us by video. It's once again my great privilege to bring you the state of the university. NDSU is a very special place thanks to your hard work and commitment. Your resolve in the face of extreme difficulties this past year is a strong demonstration of how important it is to share a unity of purpose that sees us through the good times and the bad times. In meeting last year's biennial budget cut, many of our colleagues chose to retire, many positions were eliminated, and many other positions have been left unfilled. In other words, over 149 faculty and staff are no longer with us. Many of you participated in budget study groups that identified the principles by which we would address the reductions, and all of you have shown admirable resolve as we've worked through our new reality. It's important to recognize that few institutions could weather a 17% budget cut in one fell swoop as thoughtfully and creatively as we have. I've said it many times before, and it bears repeating today. The people of NDSU are not just resilient, but are more adaptive than any I've ever known. If you're like me, you'd have trouble imagining a university community of 18,000 people that is as nimble as we have been over the past few months. We've always challenged ourselves to continue to be better, to educate our students more effectively, to serve our citizens more meaningfully, and to tackle the world's problems more intelligently. That's built in the nature of people drawn to serve in higher education as their life work. Question, test, challenge, achieve, and start that all over again in a continuous cycle of improvement. That trait is particularly prevalent in the people of North Dakota State University. We also weather downtimes because we know who we are. We know what our strengths are. We know what our potentials are. We're good at what we do. We know where we fit in the higher education ecosystem. We have a strong niche as a challenging research university with PhD tenure-track faculty who work with full-time students who seek this type of environment. Our strong foundation as a student-focused land-grant research university allows us to more quickly rebuild. Before we go any further, I want to say to the faculty and staff who have remained focused on our vision during this time, thank you. Thank you for your talent and dedication and for your commitment to NDSU. And to the many faculty and staff who have joined our collaborative process during the past year, thank you. You developed thoughtful and useful guidelines as we manage the necessary changes with emphasis on continuing to seek and achieve excellence. You know how vital your work is. You see it every day that NDSU is a place that gives students and the citizens we serve opportunity like no other. And you know that going forward, we'll have to make our way through some rough patches but will continue to be a student-focused land-grant research university that our students and citizens rely on. No budget cut will eliminate our commitment to access, affordability, and quality education. We continue to bring education and discovery to the people of North Dakota, and our researchers will be supported as they pursue solutions to the problems in engineering, health, science, technology, agriculture, and the betterment of society. All of your voices are crucial for advocating the contributions of NDSU. Let us not lose sight of the truly amazing work here and the talent and commitment and the synergy created when scholars, researchers, and educators inspire the next generation of problem solvers. One powerful example 
of our caliber is that among our faculty, we have seven research grants known as R01 grants, one of the National Institute of Health's most competitive grants in the nation. Seven is an impressive number, especially for an institution that doesn't have a medical school. Scientists from the nation's most renowned university pro and programs apply for R01 grants, and competition for funding related to oncology research is particularly rigorous. For one example, our Dr. Christine Steffen in our College of Health Professions just received a $3.7 million award for a, a study that examines how biological and behavioral factors interact in determining the success of bariatric surgery. Her research team includes scientists from the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, Kent State University, Brown University, Case Western Reserve, the Neuropsychiatric Research Institute of Fargo, and Sanford's Eating Disorders and Weight Management Center. Dr. Jadish Singh, Chair of and Professor of our Pharmaceutical Sciences, received a $1. million grant for Alzheimer disease research. The goal of the research is to develop a new delivery system that uses neurotropic growth factor to treat and prevent Alzheimer's disease. Dr. Sanku Malik and Dr. Bing Gao in Pharmaceutical Sciences received a $1.2 million grant. They're studying ways of using tiny polymer spears to deliver anti-cancer drugs to prostate cancers. Dr. Gao has also received a $1.4 million grant from the National Center uh, Cancer Institute. He's developing a treatment system for attacking metastatic colorectal cancer cells, suppressing her growth, and allowing conventional chemotherapy drugs to eliminate them. Dr. Yagna Jarajapu has been named as a principal investigator of more than a $1.3 million grant to study targeting mass receptors for diabetic vascular disease in older adults. Aging has a detrimental effect on the functions of blood vessels, and aging with diabetes further worsens the functioning, resulting in an increased risk of life and complications such as heart attack, stroke, peripheral vascular disease. Successful completion of this study will be provide promising pharmacological strategies for enhancing the reparative functions of stem cells in diabetic individuals and for accelerating the repair of blood vessels, thus preventing end organ damage. These NIH awards are a testament to the caliber of competitive health research that is being recognized on a national level and being conducted at NDSU. It's one more example of how successful our scientists are in seeking solutions that make a difference in people's lives. And significant research occurs across all of our campus. The interdisciplinary Grand Challenges research projects are an exciting new approach first introduced just two years ago. The engineered Cancer Test Beds initiative involves scientists from engineering, science and mathematics, business, and the arts, humanities, and social sciences, working to develop ways to build the test beds used to manufacture drug delivery systems, market the innovations, engage the reactions of patients in the medical community. A second grand challenge project, the Population Health Research Initiative, will establish a Doctor of Public Health degree program at NDSU and launch other collaborative programs that combine fields of six academic colleges. The goal is to increase NDS usability to conduct more extensive and effective population health research while contributing to the health and well-being of North Dakotans, particularly in rural areas in the western part of our state. I've just shared a few examples of research, but there are many more as we work to feed the world and cure cancer. It's important for us to recognize the caliber, breadth, and impact of the research conducted here. And that here, unlike most of our peer institutions, our students are working alongside these world-class researchers. No wonder we are continuing to attract the greatest students we ever have had. Our strengths in engineering and health professions are more and more well-known, as are our full slate of offerings in the arts, humanities, agriculture, business, human development, and education. We're a great example of something a coach recently said about the value of adversity. Sports figures are known for some kooky adages, I'll give you that. Yogi Bear is famous, baseball is 90% mental and the other half is physical. <laughs> or my personal favorite, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. <laughs> for us today though, I'll use a more serious quote from Clemson football coach Dabo Sweeney that, who shared it with our coach Chris Kleiman. Good teams handle adversity, 
Great teams become better because of diversity. We have a history of achievement despite adversity. In the past, we've faced objective and subjective challenges, and we've prevailed, and we will again eat adversity for lunch. It's what strengthens us. If we can recover from the 1937 episode in which then Governor Wild Bill Langer directly fired some of our faculty, leading to NDSU losing its accreditation, what can't we recover from? And in fact, we've already started bouncing back from our most recent adversity. Specifically, I'm happy to report several positive factors illustrating our rebound. First, and perhaps most critically, we'll soon start hiring new faculty and anticipate attracting some of the nation's best and brightest. Second, without any state funding, nearly $78 million in construction is underway or about to begin, including the new Catherine Cater Residence Hall and replacement of University Village. Those projects are being funded by bonds that we issue and pay back with revenue derived from the buildings. In other words, no state dollars are used. Let me tell you more about those bonds. As part of the process for issuing bonds, we're required to be reviewed by bond rating agencies, which assess the financial strength, organization, and leadership of the university. NDSU was rated by both S&P Global Ratings and Moody Investor Service. Both rating services were very supportive of NDSU's financial health. To quote Moody's, NDSU's strategic positioning is good, reflecting excellent long-term planning, strong investment in core programs and facilities, combined with careful financial oversight, enhancing financial flexibility. The university carefully calibrates its expenses to revenue volatility, which essentially given high competition for students, variable state funding, and pressure on federal research funding. Management continues to successfully capitalize on Fargo's economic growth with industry partnerships for education, job placement, and research. And another quote from Moody's, the rating is further supported by NDSU's recognition as a top research university within its five-state region, with growing STEM programming and projections for continued solid student demand due to favorable demographics in the Fargo area. In real-world terms, the strength of their evaluation, combined with a favorable construction bidding climate, saved us $4 million in the bid process on those two projects I just told you about. In addition, we anticipate the $28 million Sudro edition, funded entirely by private donations, to begin in March. And, not included in that $78 million total I've been telling you about, we'll later this afternoon rededicate Churchill Hall, where we just completed an $11 million update of that historic residence hall. Thirdly, we've welcomed the second largest freshman class in NDSU history while maintaining their high quality of academic preparation. And in fact, the grade point average of this year's class rose again to 3.7. Given the realities of demographics and the intense competition for the best students in the marketplace, this is a significant milestone that increases the increasing appreciation of the level of education and affordability that students experience here. At the same time, our retention and graduation rates are improving at an excellent pace. In fact, our four-year graduation rate has just increased over 7% in the last few years. Fourth, I'm energized by the beginnings of a major philanthropic campaign launched in partnership with the NDSU Foundation and Alumni Association that will focus investments in our people, the students, the faculty, and the staff of NDSU. As our university strives to reach the next level, Investments in endowment scholarships and named faculty positions, such as chairs and professorships, will be at the heart of a multi-year comprehensive campaign. When I think of the next iteration of what being a student-focused land-grant research university looks like, I envision a place of interdisciplinary learning and discovery where students with transformative scholarships are working alongside faculty with endowed professorships in state-of-the-art facilities solving the grand challenges of our time. The result is that our region's workforce shortages are addressed, healthcare, agriculture, and technology solutions are discovered, and our potential in unlocking what the nation needs is given back to our people. Energizing forces are behind this campaign, thanks to the leadership of trustees and alumni directors of the foundation. But all of us will need to be actively involved. 
We will need your help as this historic endeavor begins. Another exciting foundation-led project is well underway at the 1600 block of University Drive. That private apartment complex across from the shack will significantly add to the housing options for our students. And a fifth, we are sustaining so far in a very unfavorable federal and state fiscal environment our research productivity. Given the budget realities around the state and the nation, that's no small achievement, believe me. I thought you'd also be interested in a few examples of student achievement, and I've narrowed my focus to our track and field students, who don't get as much of attention as our other sports, but are some of our very best examples of student athlete success. Morgan Milbreth has been named the Summit League's Female Scholar Athlete of the Year across all sports, the most prestigious individual honor presented by the league each year. She also earned academic All-American honors with her 3.98 GPA, 3.98. <laughs> Rose Jackson was honored as the Summit League's candidate for NCAA Woman of the Year after winning nine conference titles and earning first team All-American honors in the pentathlon her senior year. Maddie Martmore was a three-time All-American in the Javelin for NDSU and was named first team All-American in 2017. He is starting work toward a PhD in philosophy at Tulane this fall. Alex Renner earned first team All-American honors in the shot put in June and just began his career as a full-time teacher this month at Carl Ben Ellison Middle School here in Fargo. Recent graduate Aaron Tussich re represented Canada at the World Championships both in 2015 and at the Rio Olympics in 2016. Deborah John, a 2014 graduate at NDSU, qualified to represent her native Trinidad Tobago in the 100 meter hurdles in the World Championships this past August. Riley Dolezal, an NDSU alumnus and current volunteer assistant coach for the Bison, won his second American title in the Javelin this June. He has been a member of Team USA for the World Championships twice in just the last four years. This type of focus on performance extends to all of our students though, and our student affairs professionals have done some important survey work to identify the habits that help our students succeed. Here are a few facts from the survey. A vast majority of our students approach college like it's a full-time job. Most students meet with their academic advisors at least once a semester. Our students understand that it's important to register for and complete at least 15 credits a semester. Most of our students meet with faculty at least once a semester to work on special projects, conduct research, or get help on their coursework. And the majority of NDSU students start preparing at least three days before an exam. In another broad survey, NDSU students reported experiencing high levels of satisfaction, seeking out academic challenges, engaging with peers and faculty in meaningful ways, and share that they feel great pride in their majors and in attending NDSU. The survey revealed another positive result which I find particularly gratifying. Sophomores reported taking challenging classes by choice, even at the risk of lowering their GPA and spending more time studying than they did as freshmen. And this behavior increases as they become juniors and then seniors. Again, all of our students are impressive in their efforts to advance in the classroom, in their areas of interest on campus and within the community. These surveys show the importance we place on collecting and applying data to assess ourselves and to continuously work for improvements. I'm very pleased to say that these recent surveys indicate clearly that we've successfully crafted and continue to nurture a culture of academic success within our student body. Going forward, we plan to organize a task force to provide recommendations on the feasibility of expanding programs that meet the needs of North Dakota and the nation. We will continue to focus on student retention and graduation. We'll continue to invest in early alert initiatives to identify at-risk students in a seamless advising system to better serve students, as well as data analytics to help identify programs and courses that are critical to students' pathways to success. We're well-versed in the impact of education on the individual who could then contributes to society, an upward spiral that leads to success. 
I want to now talk about another enormously important component, the transformative impact of a scholarship gift. This year we welcomed our first class of McGovern Scholars. As a great example of enormous and immediate impact, our alumnus, Harry McGovern, established this program providing full tuition scholarships in STEM fields. The students who were selected were literally speechless when they were notified. One student even hung up the phone, assuming the news that good had to be a prank. <laughs> she called back just in case and to hear the good news again. Another family wept through the first call, so they called back to ask for the news again and then called a third time just to confirm they got it all. <laughs> I had the opportunity to meet these scholars and their families earlier this fall. What they have already accomplished academically is really humbling. I'd like to read for you comments from a few of the McGovern scholars when they were talking about their awards. My decision to pursue a career in engineering has been influenced by my life events, family, and the realization that energy principles are used everywhere. When I was young, my grandpa suffered complete heart failure and received a pacemaker that my dad had helped design. I have an appreciation and a fascination for the technologies and multiple areas of engineering required to develop something so sophisticated that it can keep a human alive. This personal connection helped me understand firsthand the importance of engineering to society. And here's another example. I once had a mentor tell me that the best students in class help even the bottom students better simply by raising the level of academic competition, and I feel I can help make that happen during my time at NDSU. While most students may view a scholarship as just a means to pay for college, I perceive that a privately funded scholarship is rooted in the desire to cultivate young intellectual talent as an impactful way of giving back to both the country and the institution that so positively influence their lives. I would consider it an honor as well as a personal motivation to receive such a vote of confidence in my ability to fulfill a goal of bettering the future of America. And one more I want to share with you. My plans for the future include giving back to North Dakota as it's provided so much for me. I hope to major in a science such as biology before continuing my education in medical school. After medical school, I plan on specializing in psychiatry, my lifelong dream. After finishing my boards in psychiatry, I plan on practicing in the great state of North Dakota. North Dakota is in need of healthcare professionals, especially in rural areas such as the areas I'm from. North Dakota, a major farming capital of the nation and the world, needs the professionals to service the many farmers in rural areas as we are dependent on them to feed the world. I look forward to being that link to our state, the link that makes a difference in people's lives. Throughout this address, my guess is you've come to appreciate why I'm so proud of our faculty, our staff, and our students. As I said at the outlet, it's truly a privilege to be a part of North Dakota State University. Our work enriches everyone around us. Thank you.